Now we're going to close our eyes to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for the wonderful, beautiful, splendid worship we are having already. Thank you, Lord, for the singing. Thank you, Lord, for the joy of the Lord. Thank you because we know that heavens are opened already upon every young person here. And Lord, I am praying nobody will go away empty-handed in Jesus' name. I'm praying for all our youth here. I'm asking, oh Lord, total breakthrough. Total breakthrough. Total breakthrough. You grant everyone, every boy, every girl in Jesus' name. Every closed door to be opened. Every hindrance to be taken away. All stumbling blocks taken away in Jesus' name. I pray you raise your mighty power down. And I pray for all our young people outside who are listening because of the connection with satellite. Oh Lord, as you are blessing us here, you'll bless them there too in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, heavens will open. And you just give us total breakthrough in the whole nation in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me a good victorious youth. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you as you are sitting down. We're looking at Psalm 144 verse 12. Psalm 144. We're looking at verse 12. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. And our daughters may be as a cornerstones polished after the similitude palace. You will see as you look at that verse that both sons and daughters are mentioned. And it also talks about the youth that as you are growing up, you are going to grow up to something extraordinary in Jesus' name. And as we come to talk about a total breakthrough, I want to examine the scriptures on extraordinary breakthrough for extraordinary youths. You are going to be extraordinary. You know, when you, extra is a word by itself. Ordinary is a word by itself. And then you have ordinary there far away. You have extra there far away. And then as we preach and pray and prophesy, the prophecy and the prayer and the preaching will be getting extra and ordinary, getting them together. And then when we begin to pray and you hear the final amen, extra and ordinary, they're already together. And then you have an extraordinary life extraordinary health extraordinary deliverance extraordinary healing extraordinary success it has come in jesus name that's why we're looking at extraordinary breakthrough for extraordinary youths we're looking at psalm 71 psalm 71 i'm reading here from verse 5 psalm 71 looking at verse 5 it says, for thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. You see, there are some young people, they don't understand that when we come to know the Lord in our youth, it makes us to go faster and go further and go farther than our parents did. And they say, well, my parents, they are old. They can, they can be Christians now. They can go to church. They can read the Bible. I'm just a young person. But you see here, it says from verse 5, that thou art my hope, O Lord God, and thou art my trust from when? From my youth, while we're still young, that's why we need to know the Lord. And what is going to be the result of knowing the Lord in our youth? Look at verse 7. In verse 7, there's the result of knowing the Lord while we're young. It says, I am a wonder unto many. I said you'll be a wonder unto many. But thou art my strong refuge. When you come to know the Lord while you're still young, then you become a wonder unto many people. All the mistakes that other people have gone through, that mistake will not be in your life. All the pitfalls that other people have gone through, you'll not have that pitfall in Jesus' name. All the sicknesses, all the calamities, all the disaster, all the bad luck that came upon them because they didn't know the Lord. The Lord will shield you and the Lord will protect you. All those evil things will not be upon your life in Jesus' name. Say, I am a wonder unto many. Say that I am a wonder unto many. 
That means unto many. At school, you'll be a wonder unto many. At home, you'll be a wonder unto many. In your village, when you go back, people will look at you and say, is this so-and-so's daughter? Is that so-and-so's son? And then they say, I wonder. I said they will say, I wonder. When you stand, when you speak, they will wonder. And when your results come, they will wonder. And the way you are strong, never see it from January until December, always kicking, always running, always moving up and down, they will wonder at you in Jesus' name. Not only that, look at the person beside you and say, I will be a wonder. Amen. You will be a wonder in Jesus' name. Amen. Those things that brought tears in your eyes in the past, we're going to wipe those tears away. Amen. All the sorrow, all the heartache, we're going to wipe everything away in Jesus' name. Amen. I am a wonder unto many, but thou art my, re my strong refuge. Look at verse 17. 17 now. Oh God, thou hast taught me from my youth. Thou hast taught me from my youth. It's not just to come to church. It's to receive the teaching. And the teaching of the Lord. And from the very time we are young, you see in some other places, if you go to some assemblies, uh, um, apart from deeper life, all those people, they get their youth together. They don't teach them. It's just, uh, you know, they, they, they dance and they drum and, and they do this and that. And they say that is fellowship. But you see, it says, if you're going to be a wonder, you must be taught from your youth. And then in that verse 17, it says, either too have I declared thy wondrous works. Now, as we talk Talk about extraordinary what? Breakthrough for who? For you, for extraordinary use. There are three things we're going to talk about. Number one, I'm going to talk about Joseph. Number two, I'm going to talk about Jeremiah. Number three, I'm going to talk about John. You'll find number one is J, number two is J, and number three is J. And if you happen to be of that name, something is coming your way. Well, if you are not of that name, but you are a child of God, and then you are following Jesus, well, even though you are not Joseph, but you are following Jesus, you are not Jeremiah, you are following Jesus, you are not Jump, you are following Jesus, that J of Jesus will come upon your life. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the experience of God's presence. The experience of God's presence. What a wonderful thing. Everywhere you go, when you are at home, when you are outside, when you are at school, when you are at the exam hall, anywhere you have, anywhere you are, you have the experience of the presence of God. You will never fail. You will never fall. And all the things that bring other people down because of the presence of the Lord with you will not bring you down in Jesus' name. The experience of God's presence. Number two, the expression of God's promise. The expression of God's promise. When things happen in the world that will bring fear, that will bring calamity, that will be a seed, what am I going to do? The promise of God will come to you every day of your life in Jesus' name. And then number three is the excellence of God's promotion. The excellence of God's promotion. You know, I believe that promotion is coming your way. Yeah. And that you cannot escape this one. Anywhere you go, promotion will run after you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Turn to the right and promotion will turn to the right with you. Yeah. Turn to the left, promotion will turn to the left with you. If you double your journey, you double your pace and you run, the faster you run, the faster promotion will come upon you in Jesus' name. The excellence of God's promotion. Number one. What's number one? The experience of God's presence. I told you this. We're talking about Joseph now. We're looking at Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. It says in verse 2. Look at this. It says, and the Lord was with Joseph. Wonderful. And the Lord was with Joseph. That's the presence of the Lord with him. Wherever you are, you might be in Egypt, or you might be in Canaan, you might be in Lagos, you might be in Portacot, you might be in FCT, you might be in Cardona, you might be in the north, you might be in the south. If God is with you, it will protect you in Jesus' name. 
no matter what missiles or missiles are flying about, it will not get to you. And no matter all those powers of darkness trying to destroy people and trying to make them sick or whatever, it will not come upon your life in Jesus' name. It says, and the Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord was with Joseph. Look at verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. That's the beauty of the life of a person like Joseph. They even saw it. The people will see it. You know, by your, by your attitude, by your character, by the glory of God upon your life, by the change of life, by the transformation of life the Lord has given you, they will see that the Lord is with you. And when they see that the Lord is with you, you know, just like those evil spirits said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, they will recognize you. And when they recognize you like that, they will not torment your life in Jesus' name. Look at that same chapter. We're looking at verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph. 21, see that. Verse 2, the Lord was with him. Verse 3, the Lord was with him. And then verse 21, the Lord was with Joseph. And he showed him mercy. He will show you mercy. And gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And then we come to verse 23. In verse 23, the keeper of the prison looked not on anything that was under his son. Because the Lord was with him. Because the Lord was with him. I pray that that presence of the Lord Lord will be mighty in your life in Jesus name. As we talk about the presence of the Lord, some people say, okay, maybe God is with every child. Every child, no matter what they are, whether they come to church, they don't come to church, whether they are born again or they are not born again, whether they are living in sin or they are not living in sin, God loves everybody and God is with everybody. No, no, it doesn't work like that. Number one, he is not with prodigal sons. Prodigal sons. Number two, he is not with proud sinners. Number three, he is not with pretending seducers. Number one, the prodigal sons. It's not with them. The prodigal sons are those ones they came to know the Lord before. They were children of God. Their lives were beautiful. Their lives were wonderful. But eventually, they thought that there is a greener field outside. And then something begins to pull them. It may be through all this, uh, you know, can, internet cafe or whatever. It may be through some of these uh, deceivers. It may be through the, the bungalows where they sell alcohol. It may be through all these. They are smoking marijuana or whatever, and he begins to think that maybe there's happiness there, and then he draws out. When you go out like that, the Lord doesn't go with you. Does he go into the beer parlor with anybody? I said, does he go into the beer parlor with anybody? Will he go into the prostitute's hotel or whatever with anybody? No, he is not with, number one, the prodigal sons. Number two, he's not with the proud sinners. There are some people who sin, but they are that they feel terrible. I've done what I shouldn't have done. Oh God, forgive me. I'm sorry. God loves such people. When you are tender, when your heart is repairing against the sin, and say, Lord, I yielded to temptation. I'm sorry. Forgive me. The Lord will forgive immediately in Jesus' name. But you know, the ones who are proud, and they'll say, yes, I did it. That's what I wanted to do. I love to do it. And they are proud of their sin. It's that like they are proud of Satan. Satan made them do that sin. And they are proud of Satan who made them do evil. And the Lord is not with proud sinners. Number three, pretending seducers. They are those who seduce other people. They entice other people. They deceive other people. They draw other people. They lure other people into evil. And they pretend as if they are, you know, gentle, gentle people, nice, nice girls, nice, nice boys. And as they pretend like that, you get into their net. I pray that God will save you from them in Jesus' name. But you see, those people who are pretending sinners, the Lord, the pretending seducers, the Lord is not with them. I pray the Lord will be with you. I said it will be with you. But then he is only with, number one, the pardoned souls. The pardoned souls. When the Lord has pardoned you, you go to the Lord and say, Lord, I am sorry for what I have done. And the Lord said, anybody who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. He will receive you in Jesus' name. Number two, he also with the 
purified says, those after you are saved, you are born again, you say, praise the Lord, the testimony of the Spirit is upon my heart, and I know I'm born again, I'm a child of God. And then you go ahead again, you become sanctified, wonderful experience. You have it in Jesus' name. Are you there? I said you have it in Jesus' name. Number three, we're prayerful soul winners. Prayerful soul winners. Don't look at, you look at Joseph. You see this Joseph, when he was in the prison, he had not done anything wrong. This man was saved. He was sanctified. He had not done any evil at all. And then they threw him in the prison. Was he angry? Was he fighting? Was he gossiping? Was he saying, I will show that woman. She told a lie against me. I'm going to show him that this is why once I come out of this place, I'm going to show him something. He didn't uh, say anything like that because he was just winning souls. And then he saw those people that had a dream. and said, what's your problem? And then they said, I had a dream. I don't have any interpreter. And because of that, I want an interpretation. And his whole interpretation comes from God. And he gave him that interpretation. And he delivered him like that. You'll be a soul winner in Jesus name. You see that's what we are talking about. When your sins are pardoned, your sins are forgiven when your, your heart, your speech is purified and then when you become a soul winner, the Lord will be with you every time. I said the Lord will be with you every time. You'll be like Joseph in Jesus name. What are the people I'm talking about? Like Joseph, like Joseph, like Joseph and the presence of the Lord will be with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I come to point number, I told you, number one, I spoke about Joseph. Number two, I'm going to talk about, what's his name? Jeremiah, Jeremiah. Now, we're in Jeremiah chapter one. Jeremiah chapter one. And I'm reading here from verse four. Jeremiah chapter one. I'm reading from verse four. The expression of God's promise. The expression of God's promise. Here we are now, Jeremiah chapter one, verse four. Are you there? I said, are you there? Verse 4, it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me. What can we do in this life? If the word of God never comes to us, you know, we're totally ignorant of the word of God. We don't have any understanding of the word of God. The word that will cheer us up when we're sad. The word that will give us courage when we're fearful. And the word that will give us success when we need success. When the word of the Lord needs to come to us. And I pray that wherever you are, any situation you find yourself, the word of the Lord will come to you. I said the word of the Lord will come to you. And the word of the Lord will always give us victory. He'll give you victory. Always gives us joy. He'll give you joy. Always gives us real stamina and real stability. He'll give you that solid ground in Jesus' name. What's the word of the Lord? Look at it in verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I praise the Lord because God knows my name. God knows my name. I say, God knows my name. You know, there's some people, it's like they don't think that God knows their name. They don't think that God knows where they are. But thank God, God knows me and God knows you. I say, God knows me and God knows you. And because God knows you and he knows us, whatever is happening to us, he'll be there before you need him in Jesus' name. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified, set thee apart, I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. He knows my name and he knows what assignment I'm going to carry out in this life. He knows your name. He knows the assignment you are going to carry out in this life. I said he knows the assignment you are going to carry out in this life. That is why God is watching every step you take. He's saying, go this way, go this way, go this way. Because he is leading you to the mountain top. I said he's leading you to the mountain top. God never created failure. He didn't create, create you for failure. He created you for success. You are going to have it in Jesus' name. You see, if you get close to God and near to God, the Lord will be telling you, this is what I created you for, this is what I created you for. If you want to put your leg in a place that, no, I didn't create you for that. If you want to join a bad company, I don't create you for that. If you wanted to get away from school and I don't want to go to, no, I don't create you for laziness. I created you for success. That thing the Lord has created you for. That thing he has appointed for you. Like for Jeremiah, you will get it in Jesus' name. But six, then said I am and not God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. He said, Lord, I cannot speak, 
I cannot do anything because I'm just a child. Jeremiah thought, I need to grow old before God can make use of me. He will make use of you. Already he's making use of us. I pray that he will increase that usefulness in your life in Jesus' name. And then say, but the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Do you know that he will deliver you? I said, you know he will deliver you. Yeah. Any trouble, deliverance will come. Yeah. Any perplexity, deliverance will come. Yeah. Poverty, deliverance will come. Yeah. And attacks and affliction, deliverance will come. Yeah. All the things that may come in the day and come in the night, deliverance will come in Jesus' name. Yeah. Always remember this. Even when, as we come here now, deliverance, protection is upon every one of us. Anywhere you are, you are in the bus, deliverance will come to you. Yeah. And then you go to school, deliverance will come to you. And then you'll hear that, oh, they are catching people, they are kidnapping people, they are doing this there. For you, that will not be your Lord in Jesus' name. Because the deliverance of the Lord, the protection of the Lord, and the preservation of the Lord will be upon your life in Jesus' name. It has happened already. I said it has happened already. It will be confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. It says, I will deliver you, says the Lord. Look at this now in verse 17. Therefore, get up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. Then it says in verse 18, For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city. There is a wall around you. A protective wall around you. And no evil will be able to come into your life in Jesus' name. That's why I am confident that if Jesus tarries, if he doesn't come, uh, you know, in a few years, that that place we have been talking about, the dream I spoke about the other time when we came for say, I'm still going to talk about dream another time. That dream is going to be realized in Jesus' name. I told you that, you know, as time goes on, when you are out of school, you do go to university. How many of you are going to university? You'll get there, and then you come out. When you come out, you do your new service, and then when I want to go to any of these offices, I need a paper there, paper there, and then I'm saying, uh, you can I see director, can I see manager? And then, um, and then they get me to an office there, and I'm waiting at the door, and um, you know, then uh, you know, open the door. I say, Daddy, come in. Oh, I say, have we met before? Yes, you say, I'm your boy, I'm your daughter. Here is, this is what you prayed for. And there I am already. You'll be there in Jesus' name. That's why it says, I made, I made you a defense city and a defense wall that nothing evil will happen to you until you get there in Jesus' name. Look at verse 19. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. No, I, I, I read so, I learned something about Jeremiah. Number one, he was a converted child. A converted child. You see, that's very important. That's the very foundation. That's the very foundation. When there's conversion, there's a change, there's a transformation, that you'll say, once I was blind, but now I can see. Once I was deaf, but now I can hear. Once I was dirty, but now I am clean. Once I was wayward, but now I'm straight forward. And once I was crooked, but now I am standing erect and standing firm. And once I was like an amphibian, not good for the land and not good for the sea, just here and there, but now there's solidity and then there's steadfastness about me, it will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Number one, a converted child. Number two, a consecrated child. Consecrated child. The Lord said, I knew you. And the Lord knows you. And then I set you apart. He has set you apart. And he says, you are consecrated. That's why you cannot be like every deacon. Harry on the street. You cannot be like that boy there on the street. Or that uh, girl in your community. They are doing this. And they say, hey, come on. This is what we do. Say, people like us that have a destiny. We don't do anything like that. Because I'm going to be different. You'll be different in Jesus name. And then he was a commended child. Commended child. The Lord commended 
commended him. The Lord praised him. And the Lord said, I am with you. I will never leave you. And those three things, conversion, consecration, and commendation will come upon your life in Jesus' name. I come to point number three now because we need to finish this so that we can pray. Because that extraordinary something is coming upon your life. Something you never felt and something you never saw, something you never experienced will come upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. And then you say, this program, it was for me. I said it was for me. It will be for you in Jesus' name. Number three, the excellence of God's promotion. The excellence of God's promotion. We're looking at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 13. Luke chapter 1, verse 13. It says in verse 13, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name, tell me out loud, John. There's something here. You know some people, they don't even know that angels knew them. You know, in Jer Jeremiah, God said, I knew you before you were born angels know us god knows us jesus knows us that's why as early as possible we come to the lord because he knew us already before we were born and he said I, i'm going to send you to the world for a particular purpose i want you to have that in your mind anytime you go to school you know sometimes we're in the class and i'm tired and all this in their writing on the board i'm so tired what are we going to do but remember you are there for a purpose and that purpose will be fulfilled in Jesus name. You know, so sometimes there's a little headache and there's a little stomach ache and there's a little discouragement and then backache and whatever. I'm feeling tired. What am I going to do? And then the devil was, because the devil knows that you have a great thing waiting for you. The, that's the time. The devil will come. Why don't you forget about it? You know, get away from home. Get away from your prayers. Get away from church. Because he knows that if you can stay every day, every week, every month until that time, that time will be a wonderful time. I will stay. I said I will stay. I said I will stay. When difficulties come, when challenges come, stay there because everything will turn around in Jesus' name. It, the angel knew that this person was John. He was going to be born then in verse 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth. Well, already we are rejoicing because of you. I said we are rejoicing because of you. Anytime I come here, I'm always suggesting, you know, I see you, even though I may not know all your names, but just see your face and say, you are there again, wonderful. And then when I come, I say, you are there again, wonderful. And then you are the joy of my life. Anytime I see you there, even when I'm passing and I see them, you know, I wave at them there, I say, praise the Lord. You don't know the kind of joy in my heart. You know, when the joy is there, you don't even think you want to eat anymore. And I pray that this joy will never die out in Jesus' name. It's not only your parents who are rejoicing because of you. Angels rejoice because of you. God rejoices because of you. And Jesus Christ, you sing about him, you preach about him, you pray to him, and he's rejoicing because of you. I pray that the joy will continue to increase in Jesus' name. Look at verse 17, it says, And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. To turn the hearts of the fathers unto the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. To make ready. The Lord already outlined his assignment. What he was going to do? As the Lord did for John and put it on an outline business. He will do this, he will do this, he will do that. The same thing the Lord is thinking about you. Everything you'll do step by step and stage after stage and moment after moment. Everything is ready down there and the Lord is going to make sure that everything is fulfilled in Jesus name eventually he was born and look at this in verse 63 now about John in verse 63 it says and he asked for a writing table and, and wrote saying his name is tell me John and they marveled all they marveled all. Even your name, that's, not, that's an extraordinary name. 
That's a special name. And it belongs just to you. And that name will do express for the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at verse 67. 67. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost. And he prophesied. He prophesied. And the prophecy came on John. There's a prophecy upon your life. There's a declaration upon your life. That declaration is from heaven. And heaven will make sure that those things are fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. But 7 to 6, 7 to 6, and thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest. Give me a good amen. amen. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To prepare his ways. You are God's property. You are God's child. And God put you here for himself. That what you will do is especially for him. And you will not fail in Jesus name. I think about this John. I'm going to read something in Matthew. Let's just open Matthew. While I keep on saying what I need to say about John. And I pray that what I'm going to read about John now. I transpire to your life in Jesus name. And look at this. Number one. He was sage and separated. John was saved and separated. Saved and separated. You see, when God saves us, He saves you. He saves me. And then He says, He separates you because you are now in a different class. Salvation brings you to a different class. Salvation brings you to a class of people that God has an intention on. God has a purpose for. And God has an assignment for. And that assignment will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Number two, what is number one? Saved and separate. Tell me that again. Number two now, sanctified and steadfast. Sanctified and steadfast. Look at John. Whatever, you know, people made fun, no, no, no problem. And then about his dressing or about what he ate, about his stature, about the place he was ministering. And some people accepted, some people don't accept. He was a steadfast person. But number two, he was sanctified and steadfast. Sanctified and steadfast. Can we say that together? Won't you go? Say that again. Say that as if that is you. Sanctified and steadfast. Number three, spirit filled and spirit controlled. Spirit filled and spirit controlled. Spirit filled and spirit controlled. Because he was filled with the spirit. That's what the angel said. He'll be filled with the Holy Ghost from his birth. And then when he's filled with the Holy Ghost, it's the Holy Ghost that to control him. And now, because of what God has said about John, look at Matthew chapter 11 now. Matthew chapter 11. Read from verse 11. Matthew 11, 11. We cannot forget that one. 11, 11. Everybody say 11, 11. Yes. Don't forget. Matthew 11, verse 11. It says, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not arisen, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. There has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. What does that mean? What that means is that as you look at all the people that have been born before John the Baptist, there we have Abraham, we have Moses, we have Aaron, we have Joshua, we have Elijah, we have Elisha, we have David, we have a lot of them. And Jesus said, this is the greatest. Now, it's transferred unto you. You look at your family. As you look at your family, you know, maybe you are not the oldest in your family. That was born, that was born, that and now you have come. I said, now you have come. I said, now you have come. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to do something in your life. I'm going to put some, impact something in your life. That of all the people that have been born in your family, you'll be the greatest in Jesus' name. And then it goes on to say, look at this in verse 11, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Wonderful. Why did Jesus say that? You see, uh, John pointed to Jesus, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. But you see, Jesus had not got to the cross yet. But you know, eventually, before Jesus went to the cross, John had gone. And now the least of us, we now know Jesus has gone to the cross. He has already perfected it. And because of what he has done, that is what makes us greater than John the Baptist. 
baptism. And I pray that the benefit of that will be in your life in Jesus' name. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. I take what is mine. I take what is mine. I take what is mine. Salvation is yours. Take it. Healing is yours. Take it. Deliverance is yours. Take it. Success is mine. Take it. Rise up and take it. Rise up and take it. Rise up and take it. Because you see, this is yours. This is yours. You open your mouth to tell the Lord, you will not go empty handed. You came here for a purpose. And you came here because you have a destiny. You have a destiny. God created you for a purpose. And God brought you here for a purpose. And you are saying, oh Lord, here am I. Oh Lord, here am I. Do something in my life. God can make you great. God can make you great, like Jeremiah, like, jo like uh, Joseph, and like John. He can do something in your life that you will never, never forget. You are not ordinary, extraordinary. You are not ordinary, you are extraordinary. There is something happening today, something happening today. If you are a prodigal sinner, prodigal soul, come to the Lord immediately and say, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. I give my heart to Jesus. I must be special. I must be special. I must be a wonder. 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 That's why God created me. He wants to put his wonder in my life, in my soul, in my spirit. He wants to do that. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. No sickness will hinder you. No affliction will hinder you. And no demonic oppression will hinder you. Because God will clear everything out of your way. So that that thing he created you for. That thing he created you for. You will get there in Jesus name. You will get there. You will get there. You will get there. You must get there. Tell the Lord. Give yourself fully to the Lord. The presence of the Lord will be with you. If you have committed sin, tell, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He will forgive you immediately, immediately, immediately. And then if you know you are born again, tell him to sanctify you. And he will do it immediately. You become a purified saint. And then tell the Lord, give me the grace to be a prayerful soul winner. And now like Jeremiah converted, like Jeremiah consecrated, like Jeremiah commended, like John saved and separated, like John saved and separated, like John sanctified and steadfast, oh Lord do it for me, like John spirit filled and spirit controlled. In Jesus name we pray and everybody said I rejoice with you because something extraordinary is coming your way right now. Say, I believe. Say, I believe. Say, I believe. Say, I receive. Say that again, I receive. Say that once more. It will be yours in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to pray for everyone and this prayer will touch your life. You know, it's just like when the rain is falling If you stay inside The rain may not come on you But whatever your name, whatever your stature Whatever your class, whatever your tribe If you just go out While the rain is falling Will it come on you? Yeah. Now the rain is falling yeah. The rain of miracle the rain of healing and the rain of deliverance and then come out now come out now say lord here am i here am i the rain is falling it's coming upon you right now it is coming it is coming and you're going to have it in jesus name father in the name of jesus I thank you, Lord, for us being here. Every boy, every girl, I thank you because there is no discrimination. You are not a respecter of people. Oh, Lord, I'm asking. The rain of your blessing will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. You brought everyone here, every boy, every girl here, so that we'll become extraordinary. And I pray that this extraordinary breakthrough will come upon everyone right now in Jesus' name. Lord, it is not your will that any shall perish. 
Lord, whatever sin anyone has committed, we're asking for mercy for everyone. We're asking for pardon for everyone. We're asking for forgiveness for everyone. Forgive them in Jesus' name. And then the strength and the power, the grace to go and live a new life. I pray that that grace will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. And Lord, no sickness will remain. How can, uh, our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. How can sickness remain here? I command every sickness in your body. I command that attack in the head. I command that pain in the body. And I command that thing walking about in the body. I command all those uh, afflictions of the devil. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I refuse any terminal disease. I refuse any uh, dead dealing uh, disease upon any child here. And I command, be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Oh Lord, I pray that right now the healing virtue of Jesus Christ will come upon every child. Come up for every boy and every girl, those who are inside, those who are outside. Oh Lord, touch them. Heal them right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. I pray, Lord, give testimony to everyone. Yeah. Miracle of healing, miracle of deliverance for everyone in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, when we come to you, we leave failure behind and then success follows after us. I pronounce success for every child. Victory for every child. Promotion for every child. Lord, touch their brain, touch their mind, touch their intellect that when they read, they will understand. When they write, it will be clear. Yeah. And Lord, when challenges come, they go for any exam, your, your presence will go with them. Yeah. Your power will go with them. Your wisdom will go with them. Yeah. And I pray that that thing you have done today, extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. Yeah. I'm asking, oh Lord, as I see them in the future, in those offices, in those universities, in those government seats, I will know that you have confirmed your word upon every child in Jesus' name. Between now and that time, keep them well. Keep them strong. Keep them happy. And Lord, I pray, progress upon progress in Jesus' name. Promotion after promotion in Jesus' name. Strength upon strength in Jesus' name. And I pray that every good thing you have earmarked for them, assigned for them, they will not miss anything in Jesus' name. Make each one a wonder. Each boy a wonder. Each girl a wonder. Confirm it in every life. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I am a wonder. I am a wonder. I am a wonder. What is the wonder I'm thinking about? God confirm it to your life in Jesus' name. 